Question number four, Phil Twyford. The question is for the Minister for Social Housing. Does she believe that community housing providers will have to be commercial in order to be sustainable? The Honourable Mr Speaker, uh, yes. Um, it kind of makes sense that uh, to be financially sustainable into the future as they are growing their portfolios that they may need to be commercial in their outlook as well. Supplementary, Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Are chirping birds in the neighbours' trees a truly representative reason some people are turning down state houses? Or is the real reason that cold, damp, mouldy houses are making their children sick? Speaker. The Honourable Paula Mr Bennett. Speaker, we have a number of declines, about 3,500 in any one year, and about 12 per cent of them are not for good and sufficient reasons. So one would say that the other over 3,000 of them are, and some of them might be those reasons. We take that into consideration to make sure that we are keeping people, A, in the types of houses they need to be, that they're still connected to jobs and schools. But there are some that are turning down houses that should not be. In the meantime, we have people in dire need that actually need those houses, and they should have access to them. Supplementary question, Phil, order. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Why does she constantly engage in snide attacks on the most vulnerable citizens when the reality is that under her government there are more Kiwis than ever before living in campgrounds and garages while she leaves 2,000 state houses vacant? The Speaker. Honourable Paula Bennett. Well, Mr Speaker, I just say look in the mirror, Mr Snide. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Is she surprised that community housing providers are cynical about her approach, given that she started off saying the State House sell off was all about building up local community groups, and now the government is courting property developers, merchant bankers, and Australian companies? The Honourable yeah. Paula Bennett. Well, Mr Speaker, we've always thought it would take a consortium to help actually grow that community housing providers, that we can have a range of skills that are needed. And as I said this morning to the community housing Aotearoa, they're very good with people, and that is their strength and their tenancy management. What they may need to do is to go in, into a consortium with finances, with banks, so that they can actually see that portfolio grow, and that makes perfect sense. In fact, I have quite Quotes from the member where he said, your members last, last year in his speech, your members have shown you can build good quality homes at a very affordable price. You can leverage private sector investment. And that was Phil Twyford. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Why should the public believe her spin about improving the lives of tenants when the government has taken half a billion dollars out of Housing New Zealand, leaving 2,000 houses vacant while Kiwi families are living in campgrounds, and has cut the number of state houses by 1,000 in net since it order, came to order. office? The question's quite long enough. Well, the Mr Honourable Speaker, we are housing more people in better quality homes, and that is why the wait list is going down. We're spending $600,000 to date on housing support products that help people into the private market. Just this year alone, we have seen Order. actually the amount that we're spending on the income-related rent go up by $75 million, and that is making an absolute difference for those people. I know that the member would like it all to stay the same, and he thinks the status quo is good enough, but it's actually not for the people that need our help. Order. 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 Phil Twyford will stand, withdraw and apologise for that remark. Then he will leave the chamber. Order. Question number five.